How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how I made these. These are Maker Coins and they are the little swatches I designed not too long ago to test different filaments. And I designed them in non-shape and today I'm going to show you how I did it so you can make your own Maker Coins. Let's get started. Ah, oh, welcome back guys. So what we have here is the maker coin I designed on Onshape and this is the final product. So the whole idea behind it was to make a simple swatch I could print quickly and easily to test out all the sample filaments I get. So in the recent MakerBox subscription service video I did, I printed out these coins in loads of different filaments and it meant I could quickly test them and have them on hand so I could test them, show them off to people. And that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you how to make your own. And the whole idea behind this is you can add your own logo, customize it, different sizes. You could give them out at Maker Fairs, all kinds of things. So here's what it's going to look like at the end. But we're going to start with a blank document. And I do have here just a few dimensions I've noted down. But I am going to be doing it again from scratch. So it may end up looking a little bit different to the original. But that's half the fun. So to start off with, we're going to do a revolve and a revolve takes a sketch and spins it round to create a solid. I've done it before in my video on creating a Red Bull holder for my car for like a can holder for my car and it worked pretty well. And we're going to be making the main shape of a maker coin using a revolve. So select your plane. I'm going to select front and select sketch and make sure we're on the front here. So the simple shape of this is essentially a gentle internal concave face with a rounded edge. And I've designed it to be easily 3D printable. So there's no overhangs or anything. It does, you know, it does have the curve coming from the bottom. So the bottom obviously looks a little bit rougher than the top. That's how FDM printing works. So to draw it, we're going to need two circles. One there, one here. Don't worry about making them touch or anything yet. And we'll need two lines. So one here and one here and right click and then escape line. The thing to remember with revolves if you draw only half the shape and it spins around to create the whole shape. So first we're going to need to join these together and we'll do that using relations. So select both the circles and we want to make them tangential, Tangen tangential, tangential. <laughs> so they are touching like that and they're not going to intersect any more than that. Then we're going to do the similar thing with the circle here and the line tangent. And that looks good. So now we can trim away the excess. We trim away the parts we don't want. So we can trim away here, trim away here, and trim away this little bit of line there. And what we're left with, we've got this strange little dot, which I don't think we need. We can get rid of that. Delete. So what we're left with is the the shape we want. Now we just need to add some dimensions. So we're going to start by defining the diameter of the outside area and that would be five. So a radius of five. And the cool thing about on shape is when you enter your first dimension, everything else scales consistently to that to match that dimension. And that's going to be really handy when we add our logo later on. And the overall length of it or sorry, overall diameter of it is going to be 40 millimeters. So coin is 40 millimeters, which means half of that is 20 millimeters. So we'll go to dimension, click the outer edge of the circle, center point, and then make that 20. Excellent. And next we just need to define how thick it is in the center. So click here and we'll make it five. And you notice it went a bit skewy there. That's okay. It just means that bottom line is not defined to be horizontal. Easy to fix, escape dimension, Click that line and then we navigate to the horizontal relation and everything goes black which means it's fully defined and we're good to go so make sure there's no no sort of stray lines anywhere which will stop the revolve from forming but like that looks pretty good so we'll select okay and then we'll go to revolve and we'll select the face for revolving which is that and revolve axis will be the center point there and like magic, it creates that revolve. So the next step is to create our logo. So you could do the little outside areas first, but what we want to do is the logo first because there's going to be a few other details that we want to make, which might affect the outside. 
So we'll go over the logo first. And the way I made it is I created a DXF. I exported a DXF out of Illustrator. And we're gonna use the new import DXF function to bring it into Onshape. So before that, we just need to give it a plane, which we can put the logo onto, and then we're gonna cut it down into our maker coin. So I'm gonna select this tool here, plane, and select my top plane, and we'll just offset it so it's above, above the coin. So maybe five, is that offset enough? No, 10. 10 would be enough. Although you could make it even higher. It's not really critical at this point. Excellent. So now we need to select the plane and select sketch. And then we need to import our DXF. So before we can go to import DXF or insert DXF, we need to actually bring it into on shape. So to do that, down the bottom left, create tab. We need to import. And here I have it there. So just grab that document. It needs to be a DXF. And then we can find it in our insert DXF. There we go, excellent. So something I have noticed is this says Maker's Muse underneath in the original DXF. It's importing without all the letters. I'm not sure why, but the logo part is there and that's what I want. So I'm just gonna go through and delete the leftover letters. And you'll notice that the logo is way too big, but that's okay, we can scale it. And like I said before, the functions within Onshape, the first dimension will scale everything linearly. So to do that, we'll go to dimension and we'll dimension it. Uh, let's dimension it from across, Oops, escape. So from its widest point across. So obviously 151, a little bit too big for a 40 millimeter coin, but I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Maybe make it 34. 34. So that looks pretty good. So I'll escape the dimension tool and select everything with a box select. And if you right click the sketches, and I'm gonna show you why I'm doing this. If I just try to drag this down into position, it's gonna kind of explode because none of these lines are constrained or anything. They're just, a DXF just has lines defined in space. But once you bring them into a program like Onshape, they lose that definition and there's no as you can see, they're blue, they're not constrained. But that's okay, if you select them all and right click, we can go to transform sketch entities. And this way we can move them all without worrying about them going haywire. So we'll drag them down to position over the coin. And we can even rotate it a bit. So I can move my origin for the rotate right to the center and spin it around, whatever you like. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'll just click somewhere else and there's our logo right in the middle of the coin. Perfect. So once we're done with that, click sketch and extrude. And this is where you can get a bit, uh, bit interesting with yours. You could extrude a solid. So I've cut away here, but you could extrude you know, up. So you could emboss instead of deboss or cut through. You could actually extrude. But in this case, I want to cut all the way through. So I'm going to remove and blind straight through the part. Done. So we've got the start of our little coin, but it's pretty boring at the moment. It's just the logo straight through. There's no interesting features and certainly the outside being smooth isn't really fun to play with. I mean, these, these are good fun to twizzle, to twizzle with because they've got those ridges. But also you noticed I've got a little additional revolve inside to, to give it a bit more, bit more form. So we're gonna create that revolve now. So to do that, we need to start a new sketch on our front plane once again. Front and sketch. And we're going to go and unhide our original sketch. So navigate to sketch one and unhide and it'll show that's the original revolve we did. So what I wanna do is make another revolve of just a circle around the outside to make sort of a, a torus, which will give us that interesting little bit of detail there. Completely optional, you can do yours any way you like but this is how I'm gonna do mine. So there's our circle, and we can select the circle and the other circle and make them concentric, happy with that. And then we can define a certain offset. So I'm gonna define it as one millimeters, one millimeter. <laughs> and 
yeah, pretty happy with that. So before we can go through to extrude it, we need it to have a center point. And because we've already done the original, we have ours there. So that's the line we're going to revolve around. Sorry, I said extrude. We're going to revolve this around that center line. So select sketch, revolve. It already automatically selects the sketch you want and revolve axis is there. Pretty cool. So now it's gonna add these extra details in, which gives our shape a little bit more form, makes it a little bit more interesting. And I'm happy with that. So our final detail will be to add these little spokes around the outside that makes it kind of look like a fallout vault door or some sort of cog. Pretty cool. To do that, we're going to click on top plane, make sure we're directly on top. And we're going to then select sketch and we're going to add in a circle. So the original I've got here has an eight millimeter diameter circle. So we'll go to dimension and make it eight. Happy with that. I'll leave the dimension tool. You could precisely dimension this where you want, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna put it roughly there and then dimension it from the center. So what's that say? That's gonna say 21. Yeah, let's make it 21. You could also dimension it from the edge of the shape, but that involves getting an intersection curve and that's a little bit difficult to do. So for now, that's gonna work fine. So here we go, accept, and we're going to cut this all the way through. So remove, change the direction, and you can see it goes straight through. Excellent. So just to add a little bit more detail, we can add a radius to it. So here we have fillet, sorry, fillet, and then select the edge and make it maybe 1.5, maybe a bit too big, just one. Again, this is sort of getting to the point where you might not see it on the final 3D print, but it is nice to be nice and rounded. Cool, I'm happy with that. And we can pattern it, so we can stick it around the whole shape. So we can use the pattern tool. We don't wanna use linear pattern, we wanna use rotational pattern. So we'll go to drop down and circular not rotational, circular pattern. So we'll click on the drop down. So we don't wanna do a part pattern, we wanna do a feature pattern. So it'll pattern that extrude around the shape. So feature pattern, and we can pattern the extrude and the fillet. So you can select them on the shape or on the, the feature tree on the side. So we've got extrude two and fillet there. And the axes is gonna be our center point from the original extrude which is here. And again, if you can't see this, it's because you need to unhide your original sketch. So where that eye is, hidden, unhidden. Pretty easy. Right, so there's different ways you can do rotational patterns. One is just via an angle and an instance count. So, you know, enter five, whatever, and it brings it to five. That looks pretty funky. If you wanna do an uneven rotation, you could do that, but I wanna do equal spacing. So we go equal spacing and change our angle to 360 degrees. So around the entire shape, like that. And you can enter as many as you like. And I believe I did 10. So let's see what 10 looks like. 10. Yep, looks pretty good. So you can do as many or as little as you like and change the shape like that. Done. Excellent. So I'm going to hide my plane so I can see the shape easier. And I'll hide that original sketch again. So that's pretty much it. The only additional thing I changed and added to this shape was a few tiny fillets here and here. So add a fillet in of 1.5 millimeters and add it in there and there. Like that. So it just gives us a little bit of a gradual change. Oh, maybe, maybe one. There we go. So it just gives us a, a gradual transition which will make printing that a little bit easier because we're not using support. Otherwise it goes straight into an overhang. It might look a bit funky, but we're pretty happy with that. And they do print fine. So one thing I've just noticed with this iteration is the logo cuts into one of the, the rotational points, whereas this one, it doesn't. And again, very easy to fix. You can go back anywhere in the feature tree. So we'll go back to this point here where we drop the logo in, go to edit, and then we'll just select all of our sketch right click, transform, and we'll just rotate it a little bit more. So we'll just rotate it around, perhaps like that. Click, see how that goes, rebuild. And you can see that fixed it. So you can easily fine tune it. 
So that's our Maker Coin, and to export it, pretty easy. You just go to right-click your Part Studio and go to Export, and we want to choose STL. And I've designed in millimeters, so it's in millimeters resolution. You could do fine, no issues there. And we download our part, and you can drop it into your favorite slicing program and have fun. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video on Maker's Muse. If you want to make your own Maker Coin, you can find the link in the video description to my public on-shape document, where you can find and see exactly how I made it going through all the different features and sketches and you can modify it to make your own though I do highly recommend you try making your own from scratch because it will be a great learning experience. If you want to see future 3D printing videos here on Makers Muse please consider subscribing it does help me out quite a lot. We're almost at the magical 25k and when we do get to that things are going to get pretty crazy. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later. Satellite into water. He is actually blocked in space.